This video is sponsored by The Little Captain. In some respects, loading a cargo of rice on a commercial ship can be more dangerous than loading something like a container full of fireworks. Obviously, rice doesn't have the same sort of explosive danger, but it does have the potential to easily capsize a ship and lead to its complete loss. But why is that? Rice actually falls under the same category as similar products such as wheat, maize and barley, which are collectively referred to as grain cargoes. On their own, they appear to be harmless, but when they're loaded onto a floating vessel that can potentially capsize, they become deadly. The problem comes from what we call the angle of repose. This is the natural angle at which a pile of grain will sit if you pour it out. On a ship, it works in reverse. If you've leveled off a grain cargo, it'll happily stay put until you tip the ship to its angle of repose, around 20 degrees. Then it'll start to shift downhill. When a cargo shifts like this, it changes the center of gravity of the ship, which changes the ship's natural upright position. Change it enough, and you risk immersing your deck edge or even capsizing completely. It's the same sort of principle that you have with a free surface of water in a ballast tank, except grain won't easily flow back to the other side due to its angle of repose. The simplest solution, of course, would seem to be the same as you'd use to combat the free surface of fluids. You just fill the hold completely. Theoretically, the grain would be completely restrained, making it impossible to shift, but that's where we hit the next snag. You see, grain also settles. Over time, the vibrations and movement on a ship gradually shake individual grains and allow them to fill a space more efficiently, creating a void at the top. No matter how well you fill a hold, there will always be the potential for your cargo to shift. So what we do instead is make allowances in the ship's stability calculations to allow for a cargo shift. The first relatively simple one is to require ships that carry grain to have a greater amount of reserve stability than other vessels. Where most ships must have a GM of at least 0.15, ships carrying grain must have double that. Imagine a regular ship heeling over, the centre of gravity is here on the centre line and the centre of buoyancy is here at the centre of the underwater volume. The forces due to each one create a rotational force which acts to bring the ship upright. A crude indication of the stability is given by measuring the distance between G and M, which is the point on the centre line through which the force of buoyancy acts. For most ships, it needs to be at least 15 centimetres, but for grain ships, it needs to be at least 30. They must naturally generate a greater writing force than all other ship types. After that, we need to then consider what will actually happen if the grain shifts. We assume that a hold that is initially filled with grain will eventually settle with a 0.15 metre void, which could lead to the cargo shifting approximately 15 degrees. For any holds that are not initially full, we assume that the cargo will shift and settle at an angle of 25 degrees. Obviously, this shift in cargo is going to induce a list in the vessel, so we need to work that out and make sure it's okay for our ship. The actual limits change depending on when your ship was built, so let's just say we need to make sure the resultant list is less than 12 degrees. From that position, we also need to check that there's sufficient writing energy generated when the ship leans over even further. The actual method is to work out the area under a writing lever graph intersected by a healing arm, but obviously that's a little cumbersome, so ships are instead provided with a simple number that they're not allowed to exceed based on the volume of grain and its density. Obviously, a high volume with a high density is going to cause you a lot more trouble than a smaller volume or a smaller density. Of course, ships actually designed to carry grain can have more generous allowances due to their design. Their holds, for example, might be shaped to minimise the extent to which the cargo can shift. Simply bevelling the top corners means that you eliminate the spaces which would have the greatest effect on the healing forces generated. This, in turn, means that you can have more flexibility about the amount and type of cargo that you can load before hitting your limits. Similarly, you can also fit partitions into your cargo holds to minimise the effect of cargo shifts. One vertical division means that you'll constrain part of the cargo on either side of the partition, splitting the listing force that it generates. Of course, you'll need to balance that with the ease of operations like loading, discharging and fumigation to determine if such divisions are worth it. Horizontal divisions, on the other hand, are not so effective despite being common on many ships. A tween deck can subdivide a hold vertically, but what you find is the surface at the top of the upper hold can still move by the same amount as it did before, but in addition, you also have the surface on the lower hold that can now move too. Granted, the sinkage for the top division will be less than it would be without the tween deck, but you'll still have a great deal of grain that can shift to the extreme sides of the vessel. Of course, throughout this video we focused on the stability factors involved in the carriage of grain, but in reality that's only part of the story. Surprisingly, while researching this video, I haven't been able to find any accident reports covering a grain cargo shift. 
I even asked the community and over 6,000 of you responded, but the best example mentioned was from 1957, so it's not exactly a recent case. Fatalities on grain ships are actually far more likely to have been caused by crew members entering fumigated holds, or even just entering holds where the cargo itself has depleted the oxygen content. This could be an argument for the success of the grain regs and the thoroughness with which they were drummed into us at college, or maybe it's an argument that a little more time should actually be spent on the elements of grain carriage that are still causing fatalities today. Before we go, I'd like to extend a massive thank you to the little captain for supporting this video. I've been interested in the sea my whole life, but until now I've never been able to find a small companion that matches my passion. So, I've created my own and I've ordered loads of them so that you can all get your hands on them too. I've specifically designed them to be the perfect size to sit on my desk and keep me company through the many hours I spend creating each of these videos, but he'd be equally at home on the bridge of a ship or the chart table of a small boat. His friendly face is a subtle reflection of my passion for the sea and makes him an ideal gift for anyone interested in the maritime world. Check out the link below to get your hands on one for yourself or a loved one, but act fast because there's limited stock available to ship in this first run. For channel members, check the community as there's a special discount code available as a thank you to you all.